From the Energy Summit in Las Vegas, I'm Danielle Ford. With all the political leaders meeting to discuss energy, we thought it would be appropriate to meet with some true pioneers in energy, Mr. Dennis Shen and Mr. Dennis Fisher. But before we do that, let's check in with our correspondent on the floor, Mr. Pete Allman. About uh, algae and about the cleaning of our environment and how important it is and how it works for biofuels and, and also nutraceuticals. Uh, your thoughts about that uh, and uh, how far off we are before it becomes a reality that they use algae in biofuels. Exxon's investing heavily <laughs> in that process and you know I think that there's a, uh, a potential particularly with the kind of research that Secretary Chu talked about which can take uh, microorganisms and, and convert sunlight directly into uh, essentially uh, end-use products, uh, the pr kind of precursors to diesel, etc. That's a highly efficient process in the lab uh, but, it, but at a very micro level, what we need to do is continue to do the research development and deployment that will bring that really up to grade. There's, uh, there are projects now, um, uh, I think maybe Exxon was invested in, in Craig Venter's projects, who was the, uh, the person that, that uh, uh, helped sequence the, genome, the human genome. Uh, but there, there's a lot, there's a lot of effort going on in, in that arena, and I think it, it uh, as I think... Uh, the secretary noted it doesn't raise the same land use uh, issues. It doesn't raise the same uh, competition between food and fuel uh, that some of the other strategies uh, develop. So I think I'm I'm kind of optimistic and bullish on it. But it's still, you know, at this stage, it's not it's it's not uh, at a at a commercial penetration scale. And the question is. You know, how much is it going to take on the research side and how much is it going to take on the investment side to get it up to that kind of scale? Thank you, Pete. Welcome, Mr. Shen and Mr. Fisher. So, how is the photobioreactor working? The results are uh, pretty amazing. Um, a week ago, the tubes were basically clear. They were clear because we had an oxygen problem, because we had a CO2 problem. We've resolved both of those now. Um, we've added a nutrient compound that has made it so that um, our turbicity meter is off the charts and we have massive amounts of algae growing in there. Any company updates from Asia, Mr. Shen? Well, the, so far there, well, many people have produced bioreactors. However, one of the main reason that we have not been able to produce fuel from algae is the capital cost. Um, biocentric here, we have uh, a lot of experience in manufacturing and cost reduction. So what I did is I took some key components that we need to make a lot of in the acreage and I brought it to China. So far we are looking at a cost reduction of uh, about uh, 10 times or more. So some of the key components, uh, I'm hoping that uh, we can uh, consistently reduce the cost across the board so we can produce a very inexpensive bioreactor for, for everybody to use. Clearly, algae can be used for energy. What would those uses be? Well, right now we're, we're growing syndesmus um, dimorphous, and this has a very long carbon chain. You can look it up. It, it has 30 carbon chains in it. Now, why is that important? because you can crack it, you can send it to a uh, distillation unit and you can make either gasoline, jet fuel, or you can make biodiesel. So using these uh, photobioreactors, how much algae can actually be harvested every day? Right now we're looking at uh, at least, uh, this system at least can harvest out 30 pounds a day. Now what we do on this particular uh, type of, of algae is we add a flocculant once it's in the tank, the algae drops to the bottom, we pull off the rest of the water, then we siphon that algae water mixture, I call it muck, and we put it into the solar uh, panel right now to dry it. In two weeks what we're going to have is a belt extractor that under pressure and vacuum it extracts the water and leaves it into a cake. From the cake, it'll still go to a solar collector, uh, I'm sorry, a solar uh, oven, and then from the solar oven, it'll go to uh, an oil extraction process that will extricate the oil from the biomass, and the biomass left over will be a very good food for horses, which is what we're going to use it for to begin with. So of that 30 pounds of 
per reactor, how much can actually be used for the biodiesel fuel? Well, right now with this particular strain of algae, the, the, it has about a 45-46% oil content. So for every pound, you'd get roughly a half a pound of, of oil that uh, you could create. So the, the long story short is somewhere between 20 and 30 um, gallons of uh, oil can be extracted on a daily basis now, every day. So you're actually able to put about 20 of these bioreactors per acre, correct? That's correct. So you're looking at about two to 400 gallons per day per acre just in this phase one. Correct, that's what we're looking at right now. What we tell our clients is that we can guarantee that they'll get two tenths to, of a ton of algae per acre per day. That's 440 pounds. Um, some algae we know that we can at least double that. It just depends what it is that you want to generate. If it's a nutraceutical or pharmaceutical um, type of algae. Um, another one is chlorella. Chlorella, uh, we've got a, a sample coming from the Czech Republic that we'll put into our inoculant reactor. That's a, a reactor that, that grows the culture that makes it possible to go into the system. Um, this chlorella has approximately a 60% 60, 60 starch content, which is perfect for making ethanol. How much livestock feed does that translate to? The, the exact same amount. If we're dealing with 50% is oil, then the other 50% would be the biomass. There's, it's a high quality food, and we'll be mixing it right in with the... Um, there's a stable not far from here that we're actually going to be introducing it to, the, the horses there. Um, because it's a high protein, high value uh, product for them. You recently acquired some new equipment. What was it? Sure, we bought a um, uh, ex oil extraction process. Uh, it's uh, mid-sized, same one that my competitors or companies that are in the algae world are already using today. It's uh, a high pressure extraction method. Um, allows us to get the oil right out of the algae after we've dried it and fed it into this system. There's also a belt extractor method that's uh, belt extractor that's coming and what that does is that when it becomes the algae is muck we feed it through this press and it presses the water out and dries the algae that much further. I know that you're currently in the process of purchasing the building that you're in. What is the reasoning and status of that? First of all, the, we need to have assets in the future if we're going to develop our, our company the way I believe it should be developed. Two, the uh, question of the ownership of the property was um, uh, raised if um, they could afford to maintain it and we didn't want to move. Also, the fact that it's a, a perfect location for us. It allows us to do multiple photobioreactors, grow chlorella, spirulina, uh, syndesmus, and dimorphous. Um, all these will be grown here on site so people can see real results and, and watch it happen. So as far as buying the property, we're in the process of getting an appraisal done. From the appraisal, then we'll go to the bank and we'll see exactly what, what is the best deal that we can make for Biocentric. Well, thanks Mr. Shen and Mr. Fisher for your time. And thank you for joining us here at the Energy Summit in Las Vegas. I'm Danielle Ford and be on the lookout for more information from EmergingGreenCompanies.com.